All right, good evening and welcome into the Davidson Baseball Season Preview presented by the Davidson Athletic Fund in partnership with the Special Events Office in College Relations. We have a full night scheduled for you and we're excited to have you here with us. I'm Justin Parker and I guess I'm leading off tonight for the first time in my career. Uh, I'll be guiding us through a night uh, I think you'll enjoy very much. We count down to the days to the 2024 season opener, which is really hard to believe is only four days away now. It's uh it always feels early, but, man, it just seems like it sneaks up. Uh, the coaches and players might disagree a little bit. They've been hard at work for a lot of days. Now, we have a lot of good people uh, that you'll be hearing from tonight, including head coach Rucker Taylor, his staff, current players Nick Calero and Wilson Perkins, a couple of Davidson legends like Dick Cook, Nolan DeVos, and Will DeVos. Uh, and before we get started, we have Jeff Nipel with us from DAF, and Jeff would like to say hello. Good evening, everybody. I am thrilled to be here and, and learn all about the start of the baseball season with everybody else. Um, support of the program comes in a lot of different ways, but showing up tonight is one of those wonderful ways that you show the players and the coaching staff how much they mean to you. So thanks for being here tonight, and I can't wait to see you all at the diamond. Thank you, Jeff. A few quick notes on the program before we really get started. Um, Davidson played its first baseball season in 1902. Pretty impressive. Uh, Wildcats are coming off their fourth 30-win 30, 30 uh, season in program history. Went 30-24 and 24 a year ago. Uh, of the returners on this year's team, catcher Jacob Friend and infielder Michael O'Shaughnessy were on the A-10 postseason awards list last season. Jake Wilhoyt was an A-10 all-tournament team pick. Uh, we have a few Wildcats playing beyond college as well, including Nolan DeVos, who you will hear from later tonight. He's a pitcher in the Astros organization, also just got his Davidson degree uh, back in December. Last year, catch catcher Michael Carrico and Ryan Wilson, how could you forget those guys, uh, drafted by the Cubs and Padres, respectively. Pitcher Will Schomburg signed a free agent deal with the Mariners. All those guys are, are getting uh, geared up and ready for another season. Trevor Candelaria, if you remember, uh, is playing independent ball and then Eric Jones is uh, with the always entertaining Savannah Bananas. So a couple guys out there still doing things. And beyond uh, players, uh, Wildcat baseball alums currently serving throughout the college and pro game, including guys like Gus Quattlebaum with the uh, Red Sox front office and a guy like Duran Olinger, kind of that new age uh, Davidson guy from the 17 run who is a pitching coach in the Dodgers organization. So as for this year, uh, talented and experienced group, returns for Rucker Taylor's sixth season as head coach. And uh, with that, I'll welcome in the head coach of the Wildcats, Rucker Taylor, who is in his sixth season as head coach and 12th overall at Davidson. And RT, what's going on tonight? Not much, man. How you doing? Good. We're talking a lot these days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> it is um, the season is here. We're, we're four days away. How, how are things in your world? How do you feel? It's been good, man. It's been good. I'm a little bit of my own bubble. As you point out to me today, Cody Bellinger has not, in fact, signed with your Chicago Cubs. So it's it's uh, it's that time of the year, man. It's that time of the year. That's a good thing. The um, preseason stuff so far, uh, well, you had the fall. We touched on that a little bit uh, last month. Uh, and then you've had a few weeks here to kind of get things going. Really, once you guys come back from break, it feels like it's all just a build up to the season. Yeah, it really is. You know, I think the the period from Thanksgiving really into exams, uh, there's not a whole lot going on. That's that's probably a good thing for everybody. I think the guys get a chance to to rest up and heal up a little bit. And you certainly hope that that they do what they're supposed to over the break. And yeah, you know, I think uh one of our coaches that we won't hear from tonight that's been really valuable for us, uh Jacob Dean, JD Dean, uh, our new strength conditioning coach. I, I think he's done a wonderful job of you know, getting guys to be a, a touch better on the athletic side. And other than a few kind of random um, things that the last couple of weeks, you know, we're, we're relatively healthy. So I, I think he's done a wonderful job. And also Bailey Adams, who, who we will not hear from time either, but our, our new athletic trainer, um, she's been great, man. She, she's uh, likes baseball. Uh, I think understands the game. Has done a wonderful job with our guys of really in the last three or four weeks coming in, getting acclimated, putting faces and names together and, then we've had some some so those random injuries we uh, just kind of alluded to the last couple of days. She's she's been out there front and center to uh, to help make sure the guys are doing what they're supposed to. So yeah, I think it's a, it's an exciting time of the year. 
Uh, it's hard to believe it's that time of the year already, uh, but it certainly is. I know it's a, a busy time for a lot of things going on campus, but but certainly excited about it. What do you, what do you like about this group? It seems like when I'm out there, it's a fun group. It's a group that works hard. They seem to be bought in um, and they're just ready to get out there and compete. Yeah, it's a um, it's a different group. You know, you mentioned some of the guys that are no longer here and there's a lot of, of really good leadership that that graduated with that or got drafted and went with that. Uh, you know, as we kind of talked about on the the earlier uh, Zoom we did this fall or I guess winter, really, um, we weren't very good in the fall. <laughs> you know, that that's just the reality. Um, and and I, I, I think we anticipated that. Uh, I think the inconsistency of it was really, I think, frustrating from coaches. I, I think on the good side, I think the, the players were frustrated with it. Um, but I think as we got towards that Thanksgiving break, uh, you know, two of the guys are on this call and, and Nick and Wilson, um, them and a couple other guys really kind of took the bull by the horns, as, as some say. And I think they've, they've really been doing a lot of things um, player driven. I think they got tired of hearing my voice. And I think they're doing some things uh, on their own that have really progressed us in the last, eh, you know, four or five weeks. And I think that's a, a really good thing. You know, our first weekend of inner squads was, I guess, three weekends ago now. And we were really good. Um, and not that I didn't expect that, but I was thinking that might be more of a early midseason, you know, once we're playing a, an opponent with a different uniform on. But it was really encouraging to see it from, you know, our guys uh, right out of the gate. And, you know, not every day is perfect. We certainly don't expect that. But I think we've come a long ways. I think that's a lot of the players, you know, taking ownership and taking leadership of some day-to-day -day things. And sort of the two captains I mentioned, and, you know, a guy you'll talk a little bit later you know, Nolan Devos, man, he's, you know, I think a great example of a guy that did that in his own way, his own comfort level, you know, later on in his career. So I think when when the, you know, your best players are doing things like that, it, it makes it a lot easier as a coach. Uh, but as you alluded to, I think there's a lot of guys that are having fun. Uh, I do think there's a very good chemistry, at least that's certainly our perception of it. I think our older guys traditionally do an exceptional job of being welcoming to the younger guys. Uh, I think, you know, as coaches, we try to avoid some of the the class warfare where, you know, j freshmen are doing this just because they're freshmen. There, there's some seniors that have to do some menial custodial uh, tasks around the field. And that, that's, you know, it's part of the expectation of everyone. But those guys are doing a wonderful job of I think, making the younger guys feel welcome. And, then, you know, conversely, the younger guys have come in and, you know, they don't what they've asked. They're not coming in talking about what their uh, high school stats were or anything like that. So it's, it's been a it's been a uh, it's been a very different group. I think it's a group that's grown a lot. And yeah, I've told them really since day one, I think this team has the chance to grow as much as, as anyone that I've been a part of here. And that, that's exciting as a coach. What do you like about, uh, well, we've talked a little bit. We talked about Carrico and Wilson. Those guys were putting up a lot of numbers as A-10 players of the year. You feel like you're not just going to replace those guys with one guy. It's got to be like more of a collective kind of effort to to do that. Yeah, I mean, a perfect world, we'd have nine guys put up those kind of stats and, you know, we'd win 55, 60 games and, you know, be playing deep in the postseason. Uh, you know, anything can happen, right? Um, we'll see what comes to fruition with that. I, I do think we have more depth this year. I think we kind of thought that going into the year. Um, you know, you look back to last year, and you and I talked about this the other day, at one point last year, all four of our captains and Will Schaumburg, he was playing professionally now, Jacob Hendelider is the, you know, opening, should be the opening day shortstop at Clemson as a grad transfer, you know, Ryan and Mike, um, you know, Mike being the the reigning A-10 player of the year, Ryan being kind of the, the healthy guy of that group. And then the the other captain, Ryan Cutts, I should say, um, you know, towards UCL opening weekend. So there's a stretch where four captains and, and you know, arguably four of our best players were not in the lineup for about a, at least a month collectively you know, Mike missed 10 weeks, Ryan missed the season, Hendy missed, you know, heck, really the second half of the year, and Sean B missed a month with an oblique. So, you know, if you told me that was going to happen, we had a chance to win the regular season uh, the last weekend of the, of the season, I, I would have not have bought into that. And, you know, conversely, uh, I was talking with, with Jim Richards, who I believe is on here, where we he talked with our team last week and it was wonderful. You know, I think it, it, last year's disappointing winning 30 games and, and finishing second in the league. And, yeah, I think that's a uh, it's both a good and bad thing is that, you know, that that's a disappointing year. I think I think our players felt that I think as coaches, we certainly felt that. And I think you certainly want to you know continue to try to set the bar higher and higher each year. Those guys you mentioned, I think certainly did that. 
but I think this group in their own way can can write their own little bit of history uh, for, for the program. Good stuff, RT. Um, let's go ahead and bring in Joe Sheridan, uh, the new pitching coach here at Davidson. And um, if you joined us on the previous Zoom a few weeks ago, you heard from Todd Miller, Josiah Hissong, Aiden Wershing. Uh, but tonight you're going to hear from, from Joe, who most recently served at UCF. That's his alma mater. And uh, Joe has come in and hit the ground running as the pitching coach. Uh, Joe, welcome into the show tonight. Thanks, JP. Uh, the only I played at UCF for a couple of years, played my last year at Notre Dame. Um, and then was coaching at Siena for the past two seasons before being at UCF this fall. So that's kind of the, the fill in on the background stuff there, but they've been enjoying it so far, obviously trying to get a full falls work in, in, in this four week span for me, just getting to know the pitchers, getting to know their stuff. Um, just with the technology and video and the access to stuff that we have now, um, getting to know the players from, a uh, on the field side uh, with the track man data, the Rapsodo data, the video that I had access to. Um, you feel like you kind of know the player before you see him in person and kind of get to know them a little bit um, just based on a, on a data side and what they're going to be capable of doing on the mound. Um, and then obviously that first week or two, you're trying to get to know the person. So you feel like you're, you're coaching the human being and not just coaching the player. Um, and there's a relationship there and that's been getting better each week. The guys are in the office after every outing, breaking down the video, looking at the data, um, putting a plan together for the next week, seeing what we like, what we want to keep moving forward with, what we want to change, where we can add some stuff in. Um, and the guys have been super open to that. It's been it's been an awesome group so far. Um, every guy has been super adaptable, super open to change, super open to kind of continuing with what they liked in the past and changing some stuff um, so that I can kind of make it my own and, and work with them one on one. Um, but the guys have been awesome so far. Every guy's kind of have a, had an attack plan, um, that we've gone over and that was early in the spring and, and they're kind of getting the hang of it now. Um, again, just using that track man data and the rep Soto data and the stuff we're getting from the stadium unit in game has been super helpful. Um, we can kind of put that together and, and put a plan together for a guy. So he knows for right hand and batters, he's trying to throw his fastball here, his slider here, his change up here. Um, and as the weeks have gone by and we can work on that stuff in the bullpen, um, it continues to get better and better each week, and the numbers kind of show that. Um, and, the, and the message I sent out to the guys today, I think we're striking out 28% of the hitters that we faced this spring. Um, so basically one in four, almost one in three guys who come up to the plate, we've been punching out. Um, and the message I've been kind of relaying to our guys is these hitters have been seeing them 15, 20 at-bats at this point um, throughout the fall and spring. And some of the senior pitchers who are facing the senior hitters are probably facing guys for the – the 50, 60th time in their career. So to still have a, a strikeout rate that that's high, that's that high um, is super promising as, as we get ready to face some hitters on different teams this week, um, which the guys are really excited about. Bailey has been awesome so far. I know Coach Taylor kind of kind of mentioned her, but for the pitching side, she has been a huge asset for us working with the guys. I think um, most of our pitchers are in with her weekly um, and not kind of viewing that training room as like a, uh, oh, I'm hurt. I need to go in there. It's a, I need to get my preventative stuff in, not a place to be scared of like it used to be five, 10 years ago. Um, and the guys have been really open to that and, and been in with her all the time and knock on wood. We've been super fortunate with, with arm health, which is always the biggest concern. I think in MLB spring training, like the likelihood of pitchers getting hurt is way higher in spring training as they do that build up than it is in July, September, later in the season. Um, that's just a testament to to the work the guys put in and kind of a transition period over winter break and the plan they had and getting with JD and doing their strength stuff. Um, and they all crushed that, came back. Velos have been at where they were at in the fall, and, and some guys have been above where they're at in the fall, which is pretty impressive um, since it's not super hot or anything like that yet. And, and typically guys gain some velo as the, as the months go on. Um, so the guys did all the work they needed to do in this kind of transition period where they didn't know me and they just had a plan to go off of. And I was trying to set them up with stuff before they got back and, and get on some Zooms and do some FaceTimes and text back and forth as much as we could. Um, but they did an awesome job crushing that stuff. And, it, and it's just continued to get better and better each week um, as we go here. And then another knock on wood here. We've got one scrimmage left tomorrow. But uh, the weather has been awesome for us so far. I don't think we've had to push back any scrimmages, which has allowed our guys to stay on track. We may have missed a practice or two due to weather, been on the infield and had to stay off the outfield, stuff like that. 
Um, but, but, but the guys being able to stay on track with that stuff and not missing any scrimmages and, and not having to push any days back. Um, everybody's been getting in a good, really good rhythm here, gotten in, in that eight to 12 inning range and, and feel like they're in a good spot heading into the season here. So what, what about Davidson attracted you and what, what do you like so far? Yeah, I think the high academic side and, and the athletic talent to go with it, you kind of know what kind of player you're working with. Um, there's a there's a high level of achievement on the academic side and the athletic side. Um, the level of buy-in that you get from guys, the ability to, to critically think about some of the stuff we talk about. Um, again, going back to the, the track man and the Rapsodo data, like that's not always easy information for guys to process. Um, and, and it's easy to kind of get lost in that stuff. Um, but you just know that, that the guys are able to handle that information, use that information in a positive way and not get swamped down by it. And, and they're still able to make the focus uh, executing and getting outs when they're out there and they don't get bogged up in that stuff. Um, so I guess a funny story, kind of the, the connection between me and RT originally, um, the guy who recruited me at UCF when I was 14, 15, freshman in high school was uh, – definitely teammates if not roommates with RT back at Vanderbilt back in the day uh, so that's kind of where the initial connection came from and, and obviously I think very highly of that guy who recruited me back in the day uh, and he thought very highly of RT um, so that was where the initial connection came from and then just the more you the more you dig into the success on the athletic side and, and kind of the Davidson College uh, mindset and where the where the student athletes are at um, is, is really where all that draw comes from. And, and there's just so much value on and off the field that, that can attract somebody. And, and what you touched on this a little bit briefly, but what, what about all the information that you're getting now um, with TrackMan and Rapsodo and everything else? Um, we, we heard from the rest of the staff on that, on that last Zoom about that. Just give us a, a brief snapshot of, of your take on all that and how it helps and, and just the amount of, information you're given yeah i think it just takes out a lot of the guessing work so guys who have been around the game for 30 40 years like if there's a high spin high ride fastball like a scout 30 years ago could tell you it was, it's a high ride high spin fastball uh, but this just puts exact measurements to it um, when you throw a bad breaking ball in the pan it, it spits back out the the movement wasn't as good the spin wasn't as good um, it just gives live feedback and and live kind of you know when you did good you know when you did bad for the guys and, and we can look back and match each pitch to each kind of movement um in post after a game and stuff um so it's just taking high level concepts and and understand giving guys an understanding of why they're successful where they're successful in the zone um how their arsenal works together how they maybe we should add in a curveball to improve your arsenal maybe we should take away one of your pitches because it doesn't fit into your arsenal um, so there's been a lot of that with guys kind of shaping where we think they're going to have the most success in the zone, um, going in on guys some more this spring, going up and elevated for some guys who are, who are able to handle that and who have the fastball velocity and, and kind of vertical movement that, that they'll have success up there. Um, but you're basically just taking a lot of the guessing work out for pitchers and, and giving them an understanding of why their stuff plays where it does and why we're going to kind of keep attacking in those zones. Good stuff, Joe. We'll, we'll let you go on this. What? Um, it's game week now. What do you kind of want to see between now and, and the weekend? Just compete. Um, we we kind of talked. We had a very good conversation, I think, last Friday or Saturday or Thursday, maybe even. I don't know if it was a scrimmage day. Um, but just kind of I, I threw it out to them of where do we think we've been good as a staff? Where do we think we've been bad as a staff um, this spring? Um, and, and multiple guys gave feedback. Wilson here, who will talk in a minute, gave some good feedback. Um, but it really just comes down to, did we did we compete? And did we control the pace of the scrimmage that day? Or were we kind of at the mercy of what the offense was doing? Um, and that's kind of our goal. That's how we evaluate ourselves every day. Um, did we control the pace? Did we compete? Did we take it to them? Or did we kind of fall at the mercy of what they were doing, fall into their rhythm, fall into their pace, and, and let them kind of dictate? um what we're doing so that's how we evaluate things that's our goal for every day when we go out there uh, and, and the guys have really taken an understanding of that here in the last two weeks I think all right Joe thank you very much awesome thanks JP
All right, we're going to move uh, and shift gears a little bit. We've got Dick Cook coming up, um, coached the program here for 28 years and um, now serves a, as an associate AD here and he's got his name on the clubhouse at Wilson Field as well. We're going to hear from Will DeBose in just a moment as well. What's up, Coach? JP, thanks for having me on. How you doing? Good. It's almost baseball time again. It, it is. A, and did you do the Immaculate Grid today? I did. I'm hung up, and I can't remember on which one. I'm I'm not Rick Bender, unfortunately. Uh, he got a rarity score of four one time. That's not even fair. Like that's not even that's not even human. So He's not, about the last thing we needed was more baseball minutia to get into. So uh, <laughs> it's it's a daily part of my routine now. Um, and I'm excited to have Will the Bose join us. Is he jumping on here? Yeah. Yep. I've got my meter on, but hey, Will. Hey, what's going on? Doing well. So, so this is season what for you at Davidson? Number forty. Fortieth season oh. here. Yeah, yeah. So you've probably seen more baseball than most people on this call. You know, forty years of Davidson. Yeah. The the, <laughs> the number of uh uh. Big league games you've watched, listened to, and right. to. You know, we hear the coaches and JP talking about track man and analytics, and you know, you're you're in all those, you're reading all those stories and hearing all that. What is what do you think is the biggest difference in the game right now? Professional college collectively. What do you think the biggest difference is in your time? Walks. Have gone up tremendously, and strikeouts, of course, have and, gone up. And, and do you think? Uh, can you pinpoint why that is, or do you? You know, everybody's throwing well, a thousand miles an hour now. Yeah, everybody's throwing over ninety every, and that's probably one of the leading leading things that that does, that why those are so high. The guys throwing hard and yeah, not as much command, and you're coming off of your. You're a bigger Braves fan than Bobby Cox was, uh, and you've watched a million games of Maddox and Glavin and Smoltz, so you've been pretty seasoned with the value of command. Yeah. So, so what What about the uh, – we've got the action clock now, right? Davidson, we right. have two visible action clocks, one on the scoreboard, one behind the backstop. Or on right. the backstop. It required at the Division One level this year by – NCAA that every Division One school has a visible clock. Um, how have you liked that? You've seen that at the professional level. I, I how, like how it. Do you, how do you like the clock? And, and we, I think it speeds the game up. Not, not, not. I don't have those three and a half hour ball games. So we like that, right? Yes, we do. You and I were both here. We, uh, my first season, we played at the University of Hawaii in a tournament. Right. Um, and they were experimenting in that conference, the Missouri Valley Conference. This would have been spring of 1991. Uh, that conference was experimenting with a visible pitch clock, 90 seconds between innings, 30 seconds uh, or 20 seconds between pitches, and uh, the games flew by. Yeah. Right? All, all two hour, practically two-hour games or less. So, so we like that part of it, right? There's, are, there any, are there any of the new rules that you don't like? Uh, I don't. How about how about the uh, in at the major league level, the inability to do the the big the over shift? Oh, I I'm glad they've gotten rid of the shift. Okay, I'm glad they, I, I agree. Right. I'm with that. Regular regular baseball. Regular baseball. What about the only one that bothers me? I don't really see the point. Um, at the professional level, is where you limit the number of pickoff throws. Yeah, right. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't I, understand that. I either. think RT would weigh in. I think at the college level, I think some of the, I think they call them resets. Number of times you can mm -hmm. step out, step right? Rubber ass for time. That's limiting. Um, I think that's hard to administer. And I don't think that's really enhanced the game at all. I think it's made it more complicated. Um, I think Rucker might agree with that as well yeah, as, as with many other coaches. Yeah, it's it's awful. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. The, um, well, it, you, you've seen a lot of – you've seen the game evolve a lot over your time here. 
yeah. uh, both collegiately and and you may be able to share some pretty good perspectives on things. What 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 has stayed the same for you relative to Davidson and Davidson players? What has stayed? They're all first class human beings. Human beings first. Nice people, good to work with. If you ask them to do something, they'll do it immediately. Yeah, well, that's that, that's that's good. I'm, I'm glad that's a perception you've you've picked up from everybody. Because I think that's really uh, what what it's all about in the grand scheme of things, right? Mm-hmm. The wins and losses are fine and important, but uh, those types of relationships and impressions and perceptions are uh, the most critical piece, I think. Mm-hmm. So, well, good. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, we'll, you're welcome. We look forward to teeing it up and uh, yep. on Friday. Absolutely. Well, Will and, and Coach Cook are certainly two of the uh, the quality human beings uh, in Davidson baseball and just Davidson, the community overall. We were at practice the other day, and uh, the team was about to to enter squad, and RT looked at me and said, JP, uh, I don't think we have enough baseballs. Have you seen Will DeBose? And I said, I have not. And we called Will, and Will had already gone home for the day. But before I could even get it out of my mouth, he said, I'll be there. And, and we met him at Baker and got the baseballs, and – the guys were able to have their scrimmage. So um, if you're on this uh, Zoom tonight, you probably know that already, that the qual- the quality of human being he is. So, And uh, Coach Cook, you're not bad either. I love the Bobby Cox joke. That never gets old. Um, we're going to shift gears again and talk to a couple current players, uh, Captains Nick Calero and Wilson Perkins. Going to hop on here. Um, Nick is the only returner to start all 54 games last year. Three guys did that last year, Ryan Wilson, Henry Kohler, Nick Calero. Uh, Nick's the only one back. The other two graduated. And Wilson is new. Both guys are transfers. Guys, welcome in. What's up, JP? How you doing? Good. How are y'all? Good. Good. Um, Why don't you just start off a little bit telling us your path to Davidson and, and kind of what you expected, what you found when you arrived? Uh, all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. So out of high school, I was, uh, under recruited. Funny story. Coach Taylor actually, uh, offered me a walk on said I didn't quite fit the D one build just yet. So I decided to go to the number one Juco in the nation, a little better than Northwest Florida, but college of central Florida. I ended up spending three years there with, uh, COVID and everything. And then in my third year, ended up getting a scholarship to come down here and play baseball for Davidson. Uh, my path is, uh, pretty similar out of high school. Um, I went to Northwest Florida state college. Um, we, we tended to face off with CF a couple of times and, uh, the state tournament in Florida. There's good memories there, um, for Nick. <laughs> and then, um, uh, just my freshman summer, I ended up having, uh, TJ. So I'm a, Redshirt sophomore last year was my first year playing uh, JUCO baseball, and then got a call from Davidson and said, "Let's go." So here we are. Well, here here it is, game week, guys. How are you feeling? Excited. Yeah, couldn't be couldn't be more excited. Nick, I think it was you the other day uh, next to the uh, turtle. We were at practice, and you said, "I'm just ready to play some other guys. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's do this." Yeah, it's not fun uh, facing our staff. <laughs> Three days a week, especially when they know what to throw you. But excited to play other people, you know. What um what have you liked about this group so far? Um, maybe the fall and then since coming back from winter break. Yeah, so with this group especially that I've noticed, it's it's just like a big family. There's no no real division between grades. Like most of the time, walking around campus, you see a teammate. It's like you've known the guy your whole life. And it's something that it's really hard to build, but we've had it since day one. Uh, I would add on to that. Um, I like how positive this team is. I mean, it's like if something goes wrong, we always have somebody that picks the other guy up, and it just it makes baseball so much easier to play, especially when it's you're failing seven out of ten times on average. So I would say that's a good quality of our team. Right. All right, why don't you guys kind of flip roles here a little bit. Nick, why don't you break down the Davidson pitchers for us? Wilson, why don't you break down the hitters since you guys are facing off a lot? 
All right. So for the pitchers, I'll say coming off last year, we lost cuts. Fix got hit in the face. So we lost him for a little. And guys that were expected to, you know, be the guys kind of had a rocky start. But this year, a lot of the young guys, Cooper Cavanaugh, Jason Band, they come out here and they're just dotting up 90, 92 as true freshmen, which is always impressive to see. And then guys returning, you know, Miles, Jameson, Isaac Fix set to have a big, big impact this year as well. Will Banks, they're all looking the best they've ever been. And then we also had guys like Wilson here, Friday guy, going to lead us to probably an A-10, maybe a super regional again. That's what we're hoping for. Man, the Davidson hitters are always uh, a tough out. They like to uh, get deep in counts. This is a pitcher you're trying to get in and out four or less pitches, and it's really hard for – a pitcher to just get in a rhythm whenever the hitters are just so stingy, like they just fight off everything. So that's something I've noticed coming here. Nick's putting a little pressure on you there, Wilson, saying you're going to lead him all the way to the super. And that's good though. Absolutely. What, um, it seems like a fun group, fun group of guys. What, what is that atmosphere like at practice every day? You, I mean, you're right in the middle of it. Man, I, I would say I love it. Like like I said earlier, everyone tries to stay as positive as they possibly can, and then that just it brings the atmosphere up. It's like just my big thing is play with some energy because baseball is all about momentum, and if we have the momentum, I feel like we have the best chance to win. Yeah, I'll add to that. You know, at a certain point, it doesn't really feel like practice. It just feels like I'm hanging out with some of my best friends. And when you get to that point, that's when baseball becomes like the most fun in my eyes. You don't take it seriously. You're out there enjoying every minute you got with each other, and nothing's better than that. What's um, what's on your mind this week as you you kind of make final preparations for uh for the season starting? Yeah, I think our our biggest thing is just staying locked in. You know, these next couple of days, especially for the younger guys, some people get a little jittery or nervous, but just staying focused. And we know it's a long season. Just got to stay locked in for all sixty games of it. I'm just taking it one day at a time. You can only play one game at a time, one pitch at a time. So there's um there's some new signage around uh Wilson Field. We've got the new logos up some places. Um you guys have seen the new uniforms and and the rumor is that you two were two of the models uh that will be in a video shortly um that folks will see. What what do you like about the new gear that folks will see soon? Uh definitely the new colorway, you know. It's a color that just kind of pops out, and we're excited to wear those Sunday. Sunday reds, you know, it's a good tradition to have here, and we just can't wait to show you guys. I love them. Hey, J JP, can I jump in real quick? Nick, Absolutely. since we're, we're just telling everything, can you go ahead and write the rest of the lineup, the rotation? Sun's out the next few days. I'm, I'm going to go get a boat and go hang out on the lake, okay? <laughs> we're Sunday red. Wilson's the Friday guy. Yeah, I, I'm – I'll catch y'all Friday. What five thirty? Can I can I be in the dugout? Where where do you want me, Nick? Third base, first base. What what are we doing? I assumed everything here was in house and would stay on the Zoom meeting. So <laughs> okay, we'll have see the NDAs you. out after the meeting. I'll see y'all Friday night. Thanks. <laughs> that's RT. That's all right. Um, you're the captains. You can do whatever you want. That, that's that's how it goes, right? I'm kidding. What uh, <laughs> what what else did you guys want to touch on before we let let you go tonight? Uh, I think we covered mostly all of it. Yep. Yeah. We're just ready to play, you know. Yeah, we're Absolutely. we're excited to get after it. All right, Nick Nick Calero, Wilson Perkins, two guys that we think you'll see in the lineup this week uh, and going forward. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Thank JP. You. All right, now we're going to um, bring on a guy that you've seen before as well, uh, Nolan DeVos. He's a pitcher in the Houston Astros organization. Nolan was a two-time first-team pick in the A-10, chosen by Houston in the fifth round uh, in 2022, the highest pick for Davidson in more than three decades at the time. Nolan spent last season with Astros affiliates uh, in North Carolina, very fortunate to be able to do that, first in Fayetteville with the Woodpeckers, of the Carolina League, then with the Asheville Tourist of the South Atlantic League. He's already in preseason camp. Uh, he's already getting started on some things. And 
Another point on Nolan, we mentioned it briefly earlier, recently completed his Davidson degree, uh, balanced classwork with Pro Ball, and um, the Wildcats were able to celebrate with Nolan at Wilson Field just recently. So, Nolan, what's up? Hey, how we doing, JP? Good to see you again. Doing great. Good to see you as well. I, I was thinking tonight as I was preparing for this a little bit, um, kind of a cool note on you. One of your, for me, one of your more memorable saves as a Wildcat came in Kannapolis uh, at Atrium Health Ballpark uh, against Wofford. I think it was the first time I had seen that fiery side of you coming off the mound, you know, doing that. And that was in 21. And then fast forward last summer, you're in Kannapolis playing as a pro. Um it seems like it's happened kind of fast for you, and I guess that's the way it goes sometimes, but there was obviously a process to it, but we come up, and here you are as a pro uh, going into your second full season. Yeah, that was definitely uh, really special to be back at Kannapolis again. Uh, kind of brings you back through all the memories. Um, got to have a lot of family and friends out. RT was out. Um, a lot of old coaches and teammates, so you know, getting to do that and walk out there on the mound and come off to a standing ovation uh, – that was really special. So definitely, I think my favorite baseball memory I've had so far uh, and kind of just brought it all back around to, you know, pitching again. And I think we were wearing red that day too. So uh, kind of brought it back to Davidson days. That's right. For for those of us who, or for those of uh, that may not be familiar, can you just talk about your Davidson experience a little bit, your background, how you ended up here, kind of how things went from there? Yeah, my uh, senior year, I might've had, couple D2 and JUCO offers, uh, nothing that, you know, I really wanted to jump at, uh, kind of growing up, high school, uh, family background, just, you know, school was very important, uh, maintain a high GPA and, you know, getting stuff done in the classroom so you could play on the field and do your work with that. Um, Coach Taylor uh, offered me a recruit walk-on spot, um, probably about what now, five, six years ago, I guess so. It's kind of crazy, time flies. Um, <laughs> And I accepted that, and it was kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, I lived about 30 minutes from Davidson, but had never been on campus besides maybe one time when they played uh, basketball against 49ers. Um, and so, you know, it really worked out well, I think, uh, for everyone, and couldn't be more grateful for my time there. Uh, and Coach Taylor especially, keeping in touch, and uh, just everything he's done for me. So, Yeah, I think it worked out okay. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> That's what that's what folks don't know. Your parents are UNC Charlotte folks, but they've uh, they've embraced the Davidson Red as well. Yes, they have. They've uh, they learned to love it. So, well, tell us a little bit about your your day to day process um, at the pro level. What what is that like? Maybe right now and then and then in season. Yeah, so right now uh, I'm down in Florida actually. For uh, we just wrapped up. I had a early camp, and then this one I'm going into starting tomorrow is a, a mini, mini camp for minor leaguers. Um, so there's probably about 50 other guys here, um, some prospects and stuff like that. Uh, pretty much you're up 7 a.m., going to the complex. Uh, you get your thrown in, get your lift in, get your run in, and then depending on the day, you might throw lives. Um, it's been pretty cool so far to see some of the big leaguers kind of walk in, and uh, they'll all be here actually tomorrow. So get to see Altuve and Bregman and Kyle Tucker and Jordan. So uh kind of you realize you know you're not that far away so I think that's kind of one of the main things to try to keep in focus and day in you know just get your work done and whatever you're focusing on that day you know keep it simple uh don't try to you know overload yourself which I've definitely done at times but I think Davidson definitely helped with that just time management um especially this offseason when I was finishing my degree you know you go to class three times a week you're on campus lift thing I go back uh, to my facility in Concord I'm finished working out by eight o'clock and it might be kind of, you know, you know, practice over at Wilson. So I think all those things together kind of help you better as just grow as a person uh, and also as a ball player. So. Absolutely. What take us inside kind of the, the mental side of things at that level. Yeah. It's uh kind of like what we were talking about earlier, Joe was saying about track man and all the analytics and stuff, you know, but today's game, uh, I have a really good fastball that the metrics love, um, but sometimes, you know, you can do a little bit too deep of diving into it. So kind of knowing where to balance yourself out and, you know, what do I want to look at after the game? What do I want to wait till tomorrow? And so kind of being able to uh, go in, just, you know, have a plan, execute it, um, you know, keeping the main thing, the main thing, having your routine, having your thing, what do you do to separate yourself, you know, before the game and after the game? Um, 
And like same thing, you know, it's going to back Davidson. I think just it really prepares you for anything you're doing post college. And so I think that's been really helpful for me. Uh, and just kind of learning that you're going to fail a lot. It's it's tough. I mean, I'm facing pro hitters. They got they get paid to hit home runs too. You know, so it's like uh, just kind of taking every day. And one bad pitch doesn't make a season. So just kind of sticking with it and uh, learning how to get guys out. I believe the number you told me the other day was 7,500 Panini cards you had to sign of yourself i did um, yes that was uh that was interesting tell us the story behind that it, they they got shipped to the wrong place or you'd been promoted in between or something and yeah they were getting there. shipped down to florida uh, for the complex down here in west palm and that week i got promoted to fayetteville to go throw for the end of the season and so you're supposed to get a month to sign all these cards but uh i ended up only having about 10 days so once we were in the locker room, kind of pregame, I was grinding them out for an hour every day, uh, making sure I got those in on time. So uh, it worked out, and I've got a lot of my cards, actually. But uh, So it's, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. And then we, we talked about this as well, and, and you and I have talked about it a little bit. We had a story recently uh, on you uh, completing your degree and, and what a feeling that was for you coming out of uh, your final exam. And, you know, it's tough, I think. When when you when you graduate or or I'm sorry when you leave and and you're you're playing pro ball and uh, or or you're doing anything going back in the classroom, um, it's, it's tough and and you talk to me a little bit about that. You look around, everyone is not who was there when you were in class before, um, and you're trying to balance that. You're trying to drive back to to uh, to campus to to get done. Take us inside that process a little bit, just trying to balance things and try to finish. Yeah, uh, a lot of help from Coach Taylor, just kind of coordinating with who I need to email and Coach Cook. Um, but I had taken two classes online uh, the summer I got drafted that fall. And then going back in person uh, this past fall to finish up. Uh, you know, it's kind of tough. Uh, it's weird being back in the classroom and studying again, but it's also pretty exciting. Just kind of, you know, I knew this was the last go around for me. And I knew, you know, when to be done and it would feel really good. So, yeah, walking out of that exam room that, uh, that last Friday out of exams, uh, I actually PR'd that day on uh, what I was working on. So that was pretty special, but uh, yeah, you can't really match that feeling. Uh, just kind of, you know, when you start something, you got to finish it. And I think um, no, that meant a lot to me and just being able to be back on campus and seeing the guys around. So uh feels like home again. So. And Nolan was out at Wilson field a few weeks ago and um, they told him there was someone that wanted to talk to him in the, uh, in the clubhouse, I believe, and you walked in and your your whole family was there. Your your parents were there. They had a cap and gown for you. Um, one of the family friends who's actually a UNC Charlotte guy had the graduation song, Pop and Circumstance, playing on his phone. Uh, President Doug Hicks was there. Chris Clooney, the AD, was there. Um, tell us about that moment for you, because obviously you're going to be in season, probably difficult to walk at graduation, but um, it seemed like that meant a lot to you. Yeah, Coach Taylor told me that I was uh, meeting a recruit and that I needed to kind of talk with through him some things and uh so I was kind of game plan in my head what we were going to go over and I walk in and uh Will Schomburg had a cap and gown my whole family and friends were there so uh that was uh that was really surprising but uh you know really special for me I think to be in there and just have that moment and get to talk with uh uh Clooney and Doug Hicks and just kind of you know be in that environment and get, get that you know final Hi. celebration of graduating um obviously it'd be tough to do it in season so yeah, it was uh, kind of a good full circle. And then you uh, you had a picture of me um, out on the, the bricks uh, and the scoreboard behind. And so whenever I committed the day, uh, I guess in 2019, that spring, uh, I got a picture right there in that same spot. So uh, kind of a full circle moment there. And I was, um, that was really special. Very good. I think RT is going to pop on here for a moment. Yeah, uh, don't know that. So that, that was, um, yeah, I remember – we had made the offer and and you called and said, Hey, can can we come up and talk? And I remember I looked at Bangs go, I think he's committing because I, I don't think you drive up in person and you know say, no thanks, kick rocks, right? Um, so I, I I saw that photo. I had in my mind that that was probably the uh the circle of life right there. So that that was in fact what that was. Yes, it was, yep. Five, cool. I guess. Yeah, five years later. So worked yeah. out. Okay. So what's, um, I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit with, uh, and this is me kind of observing it and, and seeing how you interact, but uh, I think both your parents are on this call, but, uh, and certainly your brother included, but 
Uh, if you don't mind, share with us a little bit the the importance of your, your parents and really family in general to to you and as well as the baseball process for you all collectively. Yeah, uh, my mom coached at UNC Charlotte for about 25 years, head softball coach. Uh, so kind of having that background, being around the field all the time, uh, you kind of learn the right way to do things, you know, on and off the field. And just, like I said earlier, just keeping the main thing, main thing. Uh, you got to get it done in the classroom, be able to go up and do it on the field. Uh, my dad coached a lot of my teams growing up. You know, obviously uh, he's going to be harder on me because I'm his son. But I think, uh, you know, having that really helped me out through high school and through college. Cause, uh, you know, there's a lot of adversity. You know, we talked, uh, my Rhode Island game, um, my junior year was one of the worst games I ever pitched. And you and me had a conversation the day after about that, just kind of, you know, backtrack and working through some things. And so, you know, I think just both my parents, um, you know, always being there for me, obviously a lot of support over the years, uh, that means a lot. And just, you know, they were able to come to all my day. It's in games, all my games in Fable Nashville last year. Uh, so, you know, when, you know, things are a little bit rough out there on the mound. You can look up in the stands, see them there. So I think that's always really special. And have my brother being younger than me, but also a pitcher, you know, want to be a good role model for him, but also just someone that you can go work out with and throw and bounce ideas back and forth. Uh, it always makes it a little, a little bit easier. So, Cool. We got it. You've got a great support system. You're, you're fortunate. I know you know that. I know you appreciate it, but uh, it's, it's wonderful to see that. Absolutely. All right, Nolan, thank you very much for uh, for joining us tonight. Great, to JP. Good luck this year. RT, um, we're going to take a few questions. And uh, if you're out there and have some questions, uh, you got RT and the rest of the staff can pop on if necessary as well. And um, – RT, why don't we start with this? This is from Doug Wiley from uh, Class of 84. Coach, congrats on your success so far. Um, can you tell us about who on the, the team are, are JUCO or other transfers and how much of that do you have to compete with in the A-10 and beyond now? Uh, how does Davidson kind of compare on that front? Yeah, so we are we are really interesting in the, the NIL, the transfer portal world. The, the vast majority of our recruiting is high school. It's high school driven. I think it always will be. And that's a little bit of a philosophical thing, but I think it's certainly uh, driven by, by Davidson's admissions. You know, the guys that are on here, Nick, Wilson, Nolan, they were admitted because they could handle the course load. They were not admitted because they were good at baseball. I, th I think that's unique. You know, my, my time at Vanderbilt, um, you know, two of my roommates were, were 21 ACTs and great guys. Um, they were one was a third rounder, one was a fifth rounder. So that probably helped, um, you know, 21 ACT is not getting into Davidson. You know, I think we get laughed at if we even, even tried to bring that to the table. Uh, so our process and, and Perk, if you're still on here, I'd actually love for you to hop on and maybe give the, the 22nd version of, I don't know if, I don't say stalking the, uh, the head of the Spanish department at Northwest Florida States, the right, phrase but i don't think we're we're too far off it uh so before you do that just the, the broad answers i think we have five junior college guys right now that's the most we've ever had uh we have one committed next year so when when nick's gone when miles is gone they'll take our number to to four and that that's a high number it's just the reality uh you know when i first got here you know coach cook and i talked about it it was a really really tough thing to do um, you know, Coach Miller, who's on here, is recruited a lot in the junior college world. He, he looked at me like I had like 17 heads when I was trying to explain the process for, for getting these guys in. So we are high school driven. We are unique with that within the league. You know, there's there's an academic score, too, in our conference that are very, very high um, transfer portal. And we just that's not us uh, within our league. I think the most a school brought in this year was 35. Uh, a couple of schools brought in 25 plus new players. Division one roster this year's 40. Um, so the math is, you know, you're, you're 75 percent new roster. Um, you know, we had three guys signed professionally this past year, which was the most in our conference. Um, so there's some other schools that are losing guys, but they're not losing them just the draft or losing them to other schools. Um, they're cutting guys, which is not something we do. So we're we're, we're really unique and we're unique within the conference. Um, and we're certainly, certainly unique within within NCA baseball. 
with probably the Ivies being the closest, um, the closest comparison. But with that said, Perk, you want to give your specific story. Nick's path is a little bit more straightforward, but Perk, yours was, yours was a fun one. Yes, sir. So the backstory for that is I am, I was one credit, I believe, uh, short coming into Davidson. So I needed that one Spanish credit and, uh, those classes were just about to start and it was the last day for that to happen. And I wasn't sure whether the Spanish chair was going to be back that day or not. So I posted up shop in front of uh, her door. I think I was there for like three hours or something crazy. And I remember finally getting a hold of her and then she, she let me in. And then I remember calling RT like 20 minutes, like after having the conversation and be like, coach, I got it. But I had to, I had to sit out front of that door and wait. And I just, it was, I was so happy that I was able to just get the opportunity because I still had to pass the class as well, just to get the opportunity to get in the class so I could have the chance to get into Davidson. So that was, it was, it was a ride for sure. Yeah. And Nick, you, even with you, I think we had some, some late classes you had to add, you know, both of you guys took multiple, multiple classes during the summer. And, and I think in Perks, your case, we were looking at, you know, at online classes at like seven different schools in the state of Florida. And, and Nick, I think you had to add a couple. And, um, you know, Nick, unless you change your mind recently, you're, you're still on a, a law school track. So we're trying to get things that fit into the the law school perspective. And it, it was, uh, you know, Perk, you had some like AP classes in high school that for some reason didn't transfer in. And and we're, we got like 10 APs, but only seven came in. And it, it's, um, you know, Doug, in a long answer to your question, they were very admissible out of high school um, the junior college transfer credit for what Davidson accepts, the NCAA um, countable hours. It, it's a lot of, of pieces we're putting together. And with the COVID year, with Nick especially, there, there was some gray area to say the least. But um, they are both both doing exceptionally well. I think our team GPA was like a 3-3-2 this semester, which is I think the highest since I, I've been here. And I think both these guys actually contributed to that. Perky did really well from I remember I think Nick you did very well as also so um certainly uh they're here because they can handle the workload all right another question for you RT um any updates about the new lifting weight room facility any kind of operational things and and ways folks can help as well yeah so the you know I call it the the football uh lacrosse stadium um is just above our, our left field foul pole. Uh, they had the video board going uh, last week at night. So kind of kind of some different reflections that are kind of cool. And yeah, you know, I don't know what the sound system is that that's in there, but they um, whatever they paid for, they got their money's worth. Because I think you could be at Coach Cook's house or, or Will DeBose's house down the road and and hear the music from from there and um, field hockey. So I think Coach Cook's probably gonna. Um, handle that here as we get going in a, in a couple of a uh, couple of days but uh, I mean the facility itself is wonderful I, I think the football team and the field hockey team are, are or excuse me lacrosse team are practicing in there uh, they have told us we'll be in the new weight room uh, early middle March I think the original move-in date was early February uh, it's tense thing to do in that world it's gotten pushed back a little bit uh, it is a two-story weight room facility uh, I think it's 21 or 22 racks right now uh is the the last i saw i believe twelve thousand uh five hundred square feet is the total footage of upstairs downstairs i think there's going to be about six different offices in there for the for the strength and conditioning staff um jd is on this call I, I don't i don't think he can hop on right now and speak but um you know we have a Strength conditioning coach uh, starting this year, Jacob Dean, who who was in professional baseball for four plus years with the Minnesota Twins, and um, JD's got a lot of wonderful qualities about him, and, and he is really really fitting well with the guys. Uh, but we have him, and we really just share him with men's and women's tennis. Uh, so there's you know our first practice of the fall. I turn around and, and JD's there, and he's like, "Hey," I'm like, "Hey, what what's wrong?" <laughs> uh, because nothing. You know, is it cool if I watch practice. I'm like, absolutely. So he actually stretches our guys, you know, 90% of the days he's out there stretching, you know, the plans he's in travel with us on the road. And, you know, it's probably a, a luxury that um, the value we're probably kind of seeing it right now. Yeah. You know, I think with 
him and Bailey, the guys already have, have, have some trust there. Um, JD's able to work with our guys. He's, you know, the last couple of weeks he's been on the field, you know, during BPs, he's shagging fly balls. He's taking ground balls. He's hitting fungos. He's, um, we haven't quite gotten to the BP stage yet. Um, he did take a, he took a live swing and a coach pitch scrimmage. Uh, I'll let him share the results of that at a later date. Uh, but, but it's been wonderful to have him around and, you know, it really is having another, you know, another coach, another set of eyes. And, and as I mentioned earlier, some of the guys might tweak something during practice, you know, we used to take him out and have to send him down to the training room. And, and right now with Bailey right there, it's, you know, it's almost instant access and, She's got some guys to get x-rays quicker, MRIs quicker, and just the whole process with with the two of them has been been wonderful. So I, I think we'll be in there. Spring break is kind of the the, the move in date, and I, I think there's a if it is spring break, there's pretty a chance we'll be the the first uh, team to lift in there, which which honestly we're kind of kind of excited about, and you know along the lines of helping, um, you know there's a a lot of people in this call that have done a lot with their, you know, their time and certainly their finances to support us. Um, and, and, you know, as I've said many times, uh, a guy like Jim Richards, that's on here. Um, Dr. Ross, who's on here, a lot of people that have become, uh, you know, friends of mine and think very highly of people. And, and um, our program wouldn't be without the contributions of, of a lot of people. So we are, uh, you know, always in a, a phase of operating dollars for, you know, yearly stuff is certainly wonderful. Um, but really just the support and, and letting our guys know that, you know, you care, whether it's coming to a game or, you know, sending an email for me to share with the team or anything along those lines is, is certainly appreciated. One of the uh, gutsiest calls you've made in your coaching career, I believe, was you gave Jim Richards the platform at practice the other day with the team. Um, we knew it was going to be exciting. I heard some of the guys say he can talk to us every game. One guy said it was electric. Uh, and Jim actually has a question for you, Rucker. He said it, it might be for you or Nick, but what, can you give us a sneak peek at, at what a lineup might look like? He's putting you on the spot, so feel free to decline. Yeah, that. yeah. So, uh, Jr., just just go ahead and send me what you think it should be, and that that will just save everybody a little bit of time. So we'll we'll <laughs> let you write it. You've been out to practice a little bit, and uh, I don't know if Jip's on here as well, but but you guys and and maybe Big Danny Mooney put it together for me and, and send it to me. <laughs> Another question for you. I believe this is Greg Wilcox. Uh, kind of a two-part question. Every team has its own personality, skill set. What do you kind of expect that to be with this year's team? And also, uh, I believe maybe for guys like himself, he wants to know if there's a fifth year of eligibility available for anyone. Mm, mm. So on, on a very serious note, Greg, the uh, I think you and I have touched on this, but we are, and Coach Cook and I have talked about this a little bit, but we have um, – some unofficial plans for the, the return of an alumni game next fall. So I'm going to state this publicly and kind of hold myself accountable here, but we are, we were looking at maybe an early fall weekend for an alumni game. Um, the thought process is to do that around a home football game, uh, but do, you know, do an alumni game on our field and, and, you know, certainly let the football tailgaters see what's going on with us and then, uh, you know, have the alumni be able to, you know, shower, uh, you know, ice up a little bit and, and then head to the football game that evening. So we were certainly uh, excited about that. I think the last one we did is about six years ago and still have some some great memories of that. And I'm actually getting a few texts for some alumni right now that are that are trying to say they want to be the uh, the starting pitcher. So, Greg, we will reserve the starting pitcher, at least one of them for you. Uh, and we'll move forward from there. And, you know, second part of that question, I think we are, uh, I think it's a deeper team than what we've had, um, you know, maybe on the mound and, and positionally. I think there's, you know, it's going to be our job as coaches to figure out what guys are going to fit best and give them the best chance to succeed in certain spots. Um, there's some guys that, you know, might match up better against a, a sinker ball guy. You know, there's some guys that are maybe a little bit more aggressive and, and might pit them in against velocity. I uh, certainly could think you see some guys that might be defensive replacements, which which we really haven't had a lot of historically. Um, and, and really from us on the pitching side and, and you know, Coach Joe and, and Aiden are going to have to, um, you know, help us piece it together of what guys are, are going to be the best in what situation. So I think the days of, you know, what you'd love to have is maybe three, you know, workhorses, kind of like a, a Nolan Devos that you could give the ball to and say, hey, give us, you know, eight or heck, sometimes nine innings. Yeah, you know, I think the game's changed a little bit, and, and I don't know if that's good or bad, but I think we've got a lot of guys that can give you six, nine, 12, 15 outs. I think Perk's a guy that, you know, we think can give us 15-plus at times here and try to take advantage of that. But 
as Joe said, arm health is a, such a huge priority here because we can't bring in 30 guys every year. So we can't have five UCLs and simply go get, you know, five more guys from the, the transfer portal. So we, we've really got to be smart about it. But um, but Coach Coach has popped on and I think he's got some insight on the, the alumni festivities as well. Yeah, I just the, – the, we've done the old-timers game before – Greg Wilcox has participated before, and I believe that he put a whole lot of guys in a slump when he did that. Um, he probably maxed out his velocity by a good three or four miles an hour above what he did competitively here. So we've given him a long runway to build up for his start next year. So Willie could be 94, 95 by the time that rolls around in the fall. So we may have some hitters decide not to participate if they know that Willie's going get to the, get the starting nod. All right, RT, we are right at 9 o'clock. I think we've kind of reached that point. Um, any any final thoughts tonight as we kind of head into the 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 next part of this game week, first game week of uh, of 24? No, th thanks to you, man. You're, you're an old pro with this and and very nice job with it. And Carissa, uh, with the event, certainly want to thank her publicly and um, Jeff and Angela for helping put this together and certainly the other uh, other coaches and other speakers. Uh, this this was great. And, um, you know, certainly look forward to seeing, you know, whoever, whenever out the field. And, uh, you know, I think our marketing department's got some a few things planned this year. But certainly for those that live locally, uh, we have a few new things planned with the, the local Davidson Youth Baseball Association. Uh, you know, Matt Dellinger is an alum, but we've played for Coach Cook, uh, brought a group of coaches out about two weeks ago. We had 25 coaches out. Uh, which was wonderful. Our, our staff uh, got to spend some time with them and we're taking our whole team on our spring break to their facility. I think we have about 175, 195 youth baseball players um, that our guys are going to interact with and, uh, you know, touch base with me, touch base with one of our coaches. We'd love to have, you know, whether it's youth groups, company events, uh, there's, there's a lot of things, I think, especially with that new facility going in above left field to make some things a little bit easier from a parking perspective. And then obviously our new chair back seats, a lot easier for fans to have a little comfortable, more comfortable seat. So, you know, love to have people out the game. We don't charge admission, incredibly family friendly, friendly. And JP, you probably know this a little bit better, but I believe roughly 90 ish percent of our games are going to be streamed on ESPN, ESPN plus this year. Yeah. Uh, I believe starting with Friday and Saturday of this week um, in decent weather right now. So if you can't join us in person, certainly you can, can stream us um, and, and love for you to come by and, uh, would love, especially for alums or just friends of the program, you know, when they're in town, you got interest in, you know, sharing your story with the, the current team. Uh, we love doing that, at the, you know, beginning or end of a practice and, and certainly would welcome that opportunity to, to anyone that's in the area, even just for the, for the day. Yeah, it's a fun time of year. It's a fun group of guys we've talked about. And, um, you know, it's a, you see the same people uh, a lot at these games and it, it just makes it fun. And, before we know it, it'll be spring. The weather hasn't been terrible. It's a little bit rainy today, but you've had some pretty good weather in the preseason. And um, as you you mentioned, ESPN Plus, I was looking today, it's probably about 26 of the home games are scheduled right now. Um, generally speaking, in the early part of the season, um, like the weekend series, we'll probably get two of the three games uh, as we navigate some, uh, some crossover season with other sports and things like that. But um, things will kind of uh, turn into – full weekends of, of broadcast uh, before you know it uh, going down through the A-10 and everything like that. So RT, I think we're good for tonight. Thanks a lot uh, for everything you have done. Uh, you heard from Joe Sheridan, you heard from Dick Cook and Will DeBose and Nolan DeVos. Uh, heard from uh, players, Nick Calero and uh, Wilson Perkins. Heard from Jeff Nipel from DAF uh, and I'm Justin Parker. Thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, we look forward to seeing you out at Wilson Field very soon.